Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and now I'm on question 16 from the specimen paper of the Cambridge IGCSE um, 2025 syllabus, paper 2, non calculator paper. And here we have a question here 16 part A, which is about cumulative frequency. So it says, student measures the height in centimeters, h centimeters, of each of 400 plants. The cumulative frequency diagram shows the result. So the cumulative frequency is basically um, the sum of all the frequencies. So we can kind of understand that a little bit if we look at the actual table that this came from, which is actually in part B. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that along. Okay, so we don't actually need this for this part of the question, but I'm just trying to explain how a frequency, a cumulative frequency curve is made. So you have your frequency table, which is like this, and you make the cumulative frequency table, I'll just make some space up there, um, by basically adding together the frequencies as you go along. So you just see that, you know, between 0 and 20, the frequency is 120, so the cumulative frequency would be 120. Um, between 20 and 30, there's 80 more, so the cumulative frequency is like how many, so this tells you how many um, trees are less than, 20 uh, centimeters high okay and so this is how many of the of the items are less than 20 centimeters high that's 120 the cumulative frequency will tell us so this is what this is like the height is less than or equal to 20 and for this one we're trying to find the height of the plants which are less than or equal to 30 altogether it means from 0 to 30 so you have to add them together there's 200 plants which would be less than or equal to 30 from 0 to 30. That's called the cumulative frequency. This just tells you between 20 and 30. This tells you from 30 to 0. And then if you carry on the number of plants which are less than 40 altogether, 200 plus 124, which is going to be 324. And then the ones that are less than 80 centimeters altogether will be all of them in the table, which is going to be 400. So that's how you make the cumulative frequency table. And the curve is basically when you plot this against that. So 20 against 120. So you 20 against 120, as you can see from here. All right, this is not part of the question. I'm just explaining how this, how we get this cumulative frequency curve, so you understand a bit better what it is. And this is 30 against 200. So you do 30 against 200. That would be over here. 30 is here. So 30 against 200, right over there. That's that point, as you can see. And then you're going to have uh, 40 against 324. So it's always a higher limit. So 40 against 324. So 40 against 324. That point over there. And then finally. The last point is 80 and 400. So that's how you make the cumulative frequency curve. Then you can, you know, um, go through those points and you can plot it. Okay, so that's where a cumulative frequency curve comes from. So that's just a little bit of a, a background, which we don't actually need for part A. I'm just hopefully making you understand the whole topic a bit better so that when you are answering it, you understand what this thing is. Okay, so now... Um, it says the cumulative frequency diagram shows the result. It says find the median. Now the median of a set of data, um, as we saw in a, a previous question, is the middle entry of those data sets. The, 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 the entry that's right in the middle. Now when we talked about data where it's like we have all the values like we did when they talked about those five integers in the earlier question. If we have a frequency table that is not grouped, where we know exactly the number of entries, okay, then we have to think about, okay, what's the number right in the middle? If there's an even number of entries, there'll be two numbers in the middle. If there's an odd number of entries, there'll be one number in the middle. But, you know, that's, that's something which we will, um, or which we would have, uh, you know, um, had to deal with. But when we have cumulative frequency table, as we can see, it comes from a, you know, set of group data, right? So we don't know actually, um, you know, the the values of those 120 items. We don't know what their heights were. We just know they're between zero and 20. We don't know the actual heights of any of these. So for that reason. Okay, we cannot find the, the actual mean. We have to actually estimate the mean. Okay, so in this question here, we don't find the mean. We have to find an estimate for the mean. Okay, I've kind of covered that up with this. Let me just move that out of the way. So that's what it says. Use a diagram to find 
an estimate for the mean okay because we can't find the actual mean nor can we find any of these other things as the actual values but we can only estimate them because we don't know the actual heights and stuff of anything in the data all right so that's why we have to basically do this estimation thing all right so that's important for us to realize okay so now um let me just do this so we can okay that's better all right so now so that's an, another little bit of a side point before we start so for that reason because of what we just said we just take 400 the total number of entries so if the total number of entries is 400 we just say take 400 and divide it by 2 okay to find the median okay the median has like a symbol q2 the second quartile q2 so 400 divided by 2 is 200 so we're going to go to 200 which is halfway up the cumulative frequency curve we're going to draw a line okay um using a ruler make it clear that you're doing this you know using a ruler and in fact i'll change the color so it looks different here all right and you're going to draw a line from 200 and you're going to draw the line until it hits the curve and then you're going to okay see where it hits the height the height axis so we can see that the the you know the entry in the 200th position is 30 okay so 30 centimeters is going to be the median okay, that's an estimate of the median all right so that's what we can see from this graph all right so halfway up which is going to be 200 go along see where it hits the curve and write the value down uh, of the height at that position that's the height of the 200th entry Right, then it says the interquartile range. Now the interquartile range, the interquartile range is basically the difference between what's called the upper quartile, which we call Q3, minus the lower quartile, which we call Q1. Q2 is the median, Q3 is the upper quartile, Q1 is the lower quartile. Okay. Now what is, how do we find what Q1 is? Well, we take the number of entries and we divide by four. And whatever comes out, we take that value. Whether it's a decimal, whole number, whatever it is, we take that value. Same for the median as well. If it came out as a decimal, we'll just take that value. So we got 400, which is the number of entries, divided by 4, which is going to give us 100. So we have to go along to 100 along the cumulative frequency. So we can see here that's 80... And then you're going to have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So each of these is five. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's 80. So you have 20 units and divided by five um, kind of divisions, that's four. So each of these, each of these is four units. So that's going to be 84 that's going to be 88, that's going to be 92, that's 84, sorry, that's each of these is 40 divided by 5, what am I talking about? This is 40 divided by 5, my bad, okay, 80 to 120 is 40, so 40 divided by 5, that gives you 8, so each of these is actually 8 units, okay, so you have 88, and then you have 96, plus 8 that's 100 and um, that's 88 plus another 8 which is 96 okay and then you're gonna have uh, plus another 8 that's 100 and um, 4 plus another 8 that's going to be 112 plus another 8 that's gonna be 120 that's right so each of these are 8 units so we want to find where 100 is so that's 88 90 that's 80 88 96 104 okay so it's going to be halfway between these two that's where it's 100 is going to be so we're going to draw a line from exactly halfway between those two see where it hits the cumulative frequency curve now you have to try to be as accurate as you can there will be some sort of a, a margin of error in the mark scheme because it's not sometimes not that easy 
to get it exact. So it's going to be somewhere over here. That's right. So now we can work out what this value is. And here we have five units representing 10. Okay, so that's five squares representing 10. So each is 0 0.2. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. Yeah, that's 10. That's going to be, that's going to be, each of them is going to be two, sorry. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So you're going to have 12, 14, 16, 18. So that's going to be 17. Okay, so 17. So 17 is the lower quartile. Okay, so the lower quartile is equal to 17. All right. And the upper quartile is when you take 3n over 4. Okay, which is going to be basically 300. Okay, it's just this multiplied by 3. So that's not that's not the value of Q3. That's why I don't put equals there. That is the position of Q3. We're trying to find its position. And the value of Q3 will be found by going to 300 first. Now this is 280. 300 is going to be halfway along. So it's going to be so from over here. We go along. We see where it hits the cumulative frequency curve. Try to be as accurate as we can. And then we draw a line all the way down to the x-axis the horizontal axis from there and it's like halfway between these two okay so as we said that's 32 4 6 8 that's 37 okay so q3 is equal to 37 so the interquartile range the interquartile range which is what we have to find is q3 minus q1 which is 37 minus 17 which is 20 centimeters okay that, that's the interquartile range that's the range of these items which are the ones in the middle of the data the 50 percent in the middle okay so that's um 37 minus 17 that's the interquartile range okay so that's part two and part three says find the 80th percentile now to find the 80th percentile Okay, what we do is we take the number and we multiply it by 0 0.8. So we have 400 multiplied by 0 0.8, which is going to give you 320. Remember, we can't use a calculator in this paper, right? So if you want to, if you want to calculate this, okay, it's like you can think of it as 4 times 8, which is 32. Now we have to add two zeros and we have to take away one zero. Okay, so we have to basically add one zero in the end. Okay, because I wrote four, I ignored two zeros. I wrote eight, I so it's like I multiplied, I, multi I divided this by 100, and I multiplied this by 10. So in total, I've basically, um, um, no, sorry, what, what have I done? Yeah, so I have to do the opposite. So I have to multiply by 100 in the end, and I have to divide by 10 in the end. So that's like multiplying by 10. So you end up with 30, 320. So that is um, how we can work out. So we've got to go now to 320 along the cumulative frequency curve. Okay, so we go along to there and we see what the 80th percentile is. It's going to be exactly, almost exactly that value. All right, so I'm just going to just make that a bit neater. Exactly along there. Okay, try and be as accurate as you can. So it hits it. Again, it's like halfway. So it's like, I guess it's halfway between those two. So it's going to be 30, like 39.5. Well, th sorry, 39, which is 0 0.2. It's going to be around 39. Okay, that's 39. So the upper, the, the 80th percentile is going to be um, 39 centimeters. Okay, that's the, end, that's the 80th percentile. Okay, and that's given the symbol P80. P80 is 39 centimeters. And part four says the number of plants with a height greater than 60 centimeters. So in this case, what we do is we go to 60 centimeters. Okay, now we're starting on the x-axis, so the horizontal axis. And we see where it hits the curve, which is exactly up there somewhere. Exactly there. Okay. Um, try and be more accurate here. Just <coughs> to go exactly along this line. 
so let me just um, get that sorted out exactly along this line and then we draw a line from that point which is here all the way across so it's going to be slightly more than 360 it's not exactly 360 it's slightly more than 360 so as we said before each of these is eight okay that's 360 368 and so on so you know that there's basically one two three four eights four eights uh, five eights, uh, sorry, are uh, five. There's one, two, three, four, five. Five eights are 40. So that, that works out. So we can see here that this is going to be halfway along the square, roughly. So that's 364. 364, because it's half of one of those squares along. So that will be. All right. So there's 306. This, is, this point is 364, but that's not our answer because it says the number of plants more than. Okay. Um, with a high height greater than 60 centimeters so it's basically this number over here if that is 364 then the number of plants which are greater than okay um 60 centimeters are going to be the ones represented in this region here all right the ones that are less than 60 centi 60 centimeters will be the ones over here which basically would be 364 of them so we want the top Okay, um, you know, the ones above that um, height. So we have to do 400 minus 364 to get that. So we're going to do 400, which is the total, minus 364. Well, if I did uh, 300, 400 minus um, 370, that would be 30. I've got to add another 60 to that, so it's going to be 36. So there's 36 plants with a height greater than 360. Okay, again, we could use the traditional subtraction method if you want to okay so you can say you have to borrow from here it gives you three ten there borrow from there that gives you ten minus four which is six and nine minus uh, six which is three thirty six so, or we can just think of it do mental maths you need six to make this into seventy and then you need another thirty to make this into four hundred so that's going to be thirty six okay so there's your the answer for this question um, now, part B, as we've seen already, um, is to do with histograms, actually. So I'm going to save that in a separate video because I want to have my statistics topic split up into different sections in, in terms of the topics. So I'm going to save that in uh, part B in a separate video, which will all basically be dealing with histograms. This is to do with cumulative frequency. So, um, the, you know, if you want to find part B, you'll find it in the playlist. The playlist will be shown over here at the end of the video you'll click on that link there it'll take you to um, the playlist where you can find 16 part b um, other questions dealing with statistics um, and in in particular cumulative frequency diagrams you can find in the playlist over here and the older questions in the playlist over here dealing with cumulative frequency and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in that area thank you for watching and see you soon